Hello again, everyone. This is Randy, your sewing machine man, and today we're going to talk about beveling the opening for your needle plate. Every needle plate is either going to be a multi-purpose zigzag or it's going to have the small hole for just straight stitching, top stitching. But every machine has a needle plate. And the needle will deflect into this and cause a problem. Trust me when I tell you it'll be a gigantic problem. You see where this has this groove cut out here, a big, but the needle's been banging on it. That can't continue and give you a good stitch. And whenever I look at these, I look to see where the predominance of the needle hits are occurring. There's a few here on the front, quite a bit on the back. That's that's a whole bunch of needles that broke there. And that's somebody sewing on denim or leather or using the wrong needle, maybe using a size 10, 12 needle, and it just snaps every opportunity it gets because it's going to find its way through the fabric and break. It's going to hit this. So uh, when, I, when I see the uh, predominance of the hits are in the back, that means someone's sewing very heavy, and they're pulling the fabric through. They're trying to help it through because the machine is not feeding it because it's obviously exceeded the capabilities of the machine. And uh, when you exceed the capability of the machines, then you have to get involved and help it out. So when you pull the thread, if the needle's in the fabric as the fabric moves, if the needle's moving also, it's going to hit the back. That means someone's helping. Some people were taught back in the stretch and sew days to stretch and sew to pull the fabric. Some people do that on everything they sew because they were taught to do that. Stretch and sew, you stretch the fabric and then you pull it through. So there was always an overriding uh, factor going on. You overriding the machine's feeders and you were actually doing the feeding. And of course, if the fabric, if the needle moves, if the fabric moves, because when the fabric's moving, the needle is out of it. If you'll go through real slow, you'll turn the hand wheel so the needle pops up. Then the fabric moves, and once the fabric stops moving, the feeders drop down, then the needle goes back into the fabric. The needle and the fabric can't move together. That means something's wrong. That means you're moving the fabric. Okay, that's when you're trying to help it. It hits in the back. Now, here's the real weird one, is when I notice that the needle plate has been predominantly chewed up in the front. You know, what the heck? That's a whole different set of problems that's going on. And then I notice that the customer has uh, the spool of thread and a mason jar behind the machine, coming up and over the machine because they're using a, a tall spool. You know, they're using a cone, like a serger uh, thread cone. And uh, they want to use that, which is fine. But you have to have a, a stand. It has to go on a thread stand. Anything that's cone-shaped feeds up and over. It can't feed out of a... You know, everybody rigs up all these clever ways. Some of them are beautiful and some of them work like a charm. But an ideal situation is having the thread that feeds without any hesitation. You raise your presser foot up, presser foot lever in the back, you raise it up and you pull on your thread. And as you pull it, it should feel like there's no resistance whatsoever. Very slight, of course, because it's going through all the mechanical things, but there's no jerk, 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 jerk. If there is, you're gonna get this. As the needle's on its way down, if it's tightened up, the needle deflects to the front and hits. The front and hits, that's what usually does that. There's exceptions, but that's the predominance of the rule. Now, here's one. Oh boy, this person was an equal opportunity needle plate dinger. Dinged in the front, dinged in the back. That means they probably have uh, super th heavy threads, sewing on super heavy fabric. They're helping it, they're pulling it. They got every kind of thing going on in the world. But what you do, you don't throw these away because they got a lot of life left in them as long as they're not broken here or broken here and they will break. These will collapse down. You have to straighten them back up. But they're pretty stout. This is an old Singer uh, stylus one. Uh, the Kenmores and the Berninas. There's a lot of them out there that are just real stout, but they bend. And you have to, you know, bend them back up, get them level. It has to be completely level on the plane. It can't dip down at all. You'll cause a lot of problems. So what happens when it's beveled like, or being dinged like that, and dinged uh, in the back and the front, you bevel it. You get a diamond file. You hear me talking about these all the time. Go to the National Tool and Northern Tool, whatever. Get diamond files. They have diamond little chunks in there, little grains of diamond, and you bevel that. You can see the reflection. There's a bevel there. You put a little ramp on that. Give it a little ramp job in the front. I give it a little ramp job in the back. You can see the reflection there. So it's at an angle. It's at an angle in the front, angle in the back. When the needle comes down, rather than hitting it directly, it glances off. It'll hit in the back, it glances off. That gives you a little bit, a little bit more forgiveness. As long as it's on the back, don't compromise this area in the back. Try to keep this opening the same so then you don't have to worry about it uh, making real weird looking stitches. If this opening is that size, you're good. 
The front, you can really modify it. You polish it, get it nice and smooth. There's no dings on the front, on the top. Nothing's gonna hang up the thread. And then uh, you just bevel it off. Don't make it square. Keep the same basic oval by going at an angle this way and at an angle that way. An angle, an angle. And this stuff will eat this stuff alive. I mean, it'll go into it. You can get real carried away and look down and go, oops, a little bit, a little too much. So be easy on this because it will absolutely, when you're going at an angle like this, come back to the angle like that, back to the angle like this. You can move some metal out of the way and get it looking just fine. Now, that's your needle plate. Now, if you're having troubles with a needle plate, you might want to also check your presser foot. Here's an old banged up presser foot that I had in the drawer that, you know, it's better than nothing. Somebody might need it someday for free. But uh, the needle will hit the back here. It'll hit the front here. It'll hit all around. So you got to get your file out and you got to file this off as well. You can get your needle plate all dandied up and then this thing here will be scratching the back and you'll backstitch and the thread will break. You'll start sewing the thread will break. You're like, what the heck now? It'll start peeling it back, fraying it. You got to polish this off as well. Now, if you're sewing on something that heavy and this is getting dinged up, you might want to consider getting a roller foot. Not an even feed, not a walking foot, none of that rip-off stuff. Get you a real honest-to-goodness roller foot. And a roller foot ideally is made out of metal with metal rollers. Metal with metal rollers. And then it cuts down on the drag on the top and you don't have to worry about pulling and tugging on it as much and you'll get to the end and the ends will match. So get you a this is a high shank. You can get high shank, low shank, slant. You can get everything out there. Go on to Sewing Parts Plus and put in your order. It'll send it to you to your house. So get one of these. Redo your needle plates. And uh, when you're sewing on heavy stuff, realize that when the needle starts going pound, 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 you're out on thin ice and you're just about to exceed the capabilities of your machine almost every time.